Whether it's high art or beautiful trash, the AV Club explores the best of film, TV, music, books, and games. Inventory is our obsessively specific pop culture list. Hi, welcome to Inventory. Today we're going to be talking about blockbuster knockoffs. What is a blockbuster knockoff? It's when this Out. leads to this. This must be like what they drink on their own planet. <laughs> All right. I'm guessing that you guys recognized uh, the first clip. It's from a film called E.T. Uh, by a filmmaker named Steven Spielberg. You perhaps did not recognize the second clip. Uh, it was from 1988's Mac and Me, which was perhaps inspired uh, by E.T. And it was perhaps. about a, a magical space alien known as uh, Mac, and that stands for um, Mysterious Alien Creature. It's a case in how E.T. was sort of like so ugly he was cute, and, and Mac is just... He looks like an aborted fetus. <laughs> Uh, and in that clip, a family of aliens were brought back to life via the magical power of Coca-Cola. Hey, Mac. She's gonna be okay, Mac. Seriously, like, that is an actual plot point. So it's kind of like with E.T., you know, you had a movie that had some product placement in it, but this is more like a movie that is product placement. This is placement. product placement, the movie. He took my Coke, Mom. Here, see if he likes this. It's McDonald's, huh? Yeah. Why don't you stop by for a Big Mac? There's literally a 10 minute long dance scene in a McDonald's. So I like to think that all of the able-bodied people are dancing to mock uh, the wheelchair-bound <laughs> protagonist. And the great thing about the wheelchair-bound protagonist is he actually was a wheelchair-bound child. And I'm like, oh, that's good. You know, congratulations. You know, more uh, empowerment for the disabled. The kid's fucking terrible. Something was just in my bedroom. It jumped over my head. He like never appeared in anything ever again, and I'm very, very happy about that. So Mac and Me was, was, was hardly the first film to rip off a popular film that came before him. But there was, you know, one person who was really good at it was Roger Corman. Producer and director Roger Corman. Time for action. But he was really good at ripping things off, or like, you know, or at least paying homage. Jaws inspired piranha. What about the goddamn piranhas? They're eating the guests. Star Wars led to Battle Beyond the Stars. Does your species have kissing? Oh, yes. Gremlins inspired a movie called Munchies, which uh, hopefully you've never seen. The Munchies are here! But in 1993, there was one of his most audacious things, which was to release a blockbuster knockoff two weeks before the blockbuster it was knocking off came out. And that was uh, Carnosaur, which was a uh, kind of a Jurassic Park it's a dinosaur. inspired uh, film. <laughs> It was actually adapted from a novel. It was a novel by Schmeichel Schmeichel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one thing Carnosaur does, it's kind of a textbook for, for cheap horror movie technique, which is you know using lots of point of view shots from the perspective of the monster, uh, keeping the camera action really fast, uh, never really showing the creature too closely, you know. Greetings, green brother. When you do see the complete monster, it's pretty obviously a puppet on a miniature set. But Carnosaur compensates for it with booming sound effects that make it sound like the giantest beast that ever walked the earth. It came out two weeks before Jurassic Park, and not only that, it starred Laura Dern's mom, Diane Ladd, a longtime Roger Corman player. This is exactly what we have been trying to avoid. So both of the examples you guys have have showed were the very beginnings of the uh, like home video age. But this phenomenon of like knocking off blockbusters has continued perhaps even more audaciously through this company called The Asylum. So the titles and the packaging are so incredibly close to the movies they're knocking off. It started in 2005 when Spielberg did his War of the World remake. And The Asylum did War of the Worlds. They've also done The Da Vinci Code became The Da Vinci Treasure. Snakes on a Plane became Snakes on a Train. And if you enjoyed The Day the Earth Stood Still, you would like The Day the Earth Stop. Directed by noted auteur C. Thomas Howell. In my mind, I don't know if it's Snakes on a Train or Snakes on a Plane now. Yeah. You know? Is it the 40-year-old version or the 18-year-old version? <laughs> 
I'm yeah, confused. The one that got them the most attention was Transmorphers and its sequel, Transmorphers Fall of Man, which <laughs> tied into Transformers uh, Rise of the Fallen. This movie owes much more to uh, Terminator and uh, The Matrix, because it's set in like this dystopian future where the machines have risen over us. The budget was a, a reportedly $300,000, and you just wonder where a lot of that money went. According to IMDb, they used some of the sets that were left over from Serenity. Uh, oh, that and, would make sense. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and Firefly. And possibly the costumes. They found Seriously. some food that was left over, and they just said, beat that. <laughs> <laughs> For more blockbuster knockoffs, check out avclub.com.